Hey, I am live. Wow. Hi, everyone. Maria Bangaye, Queen Mark, founder of the association Hope for the Abuse and the Bathard. I want to start a few minutes before our guest comes because that's just how anxious or how excited I am to be hosting him. And um, I'm going to play this um, clip from one of the amazing things he does with our young boys, our sons, right? Our young kings and everything. Uh, why are you waiting for him to join us? Yeah. Teen Talks for over a year now. The reason why I joined Teen Talks is because my parents were quite concerned about the Eurocentric dominated views that I live in and that we all live in. Teen Talks has provided me with the knowledge of what it means to be an African teenager, teenager in this society. And I've gained a lot of things from joining every Sunday with different types of Teen Talks, whether it is leadership. Afri African centered values, role models, morals, and anything that you can think of. Because that's the most important thing about Teen Talks. It's in the name, it's teams talking about various topics. And I think that's what's the most beneficial thing. It's an opportunity to log off on a Sunday, remove yourself from the stress, and communicate to people going through similar experiences, and being facilitated by some highly trained facilitators. To anyone that's skeptical about programming team talks, I, I would have to say that you need to allow yourself to be put in an environment where you can learn a multitude of things. I think that if you try and you'll see how great the, the program is and will probably want to join back the next week by your own will. I think for me, the thing that I that I would like to have the fact that it's no there's no pressure around it. Nobody is forced to speak. Nobody is forced to um drive out their opinion and to get the opinion that you should you should learn from other people and get comfortable before you speak. There is no what's said on that room and all in the room and the video chat stays in the to really have our success and things. And I like how the group is like learn and know the production of the group that's a uh, consistent experience and I would recommend it to anyone. So if you do get this video, I personally tell you to do it. Thank you. Greetings. It's me, Kuma Mama. I live in South Africa. Eastern Cape near Gongwe, um, which is which used to be called King William's Town, just in case you don't know the nickname. But also 14 years old and have been with the Teen Talk Shabaka. I haven't regret even one single session that I've been in. Not that I've been since I've joined Teen Talk that I cannot sum it up in two minutes. This can include um, improvement of speech, improvement of spirit, knowing yourself, things like that. And yeah, don't forget confidence. That's the important part that you learn during this session. As I said, there's a lot that you can get, uh, benefit from. Like example, you can get so much friends or and at least you get a chance to at least be be heard or yeah, people can hear you and stuff or, or a chance to be seen i promise you that you will not regret it and your life will be changed forever 
actually fun. Like it's not something that needs to be formed. It's not something that gets up to know, maybe school work or something. It's just something that something to motivate you. The way you see yourself. Value to you to others. Okay, well, so um, that was a brief introduction to our host and all the wonderful things he's doing. And uh, without further ado, I'm just going to bring him into the studio and just let him talk to us. Because, you know, when you um, are fortunate, blessed, you know, lucky, I don't know what else to say, to host a Baba, to host an elder, you don't talk. I remember when um, Oprah Winfrey was going to South Africa and she was asking people, what is she going to tell Madiba? And they were like, well, just go and listen to Madiba. And she was like, that was the best advice someone gave her. So that's what I'm going to do, Baba. I'm just going to listen to you. Yes, I'm excited because I have three kings too. And um, I can't wait for each and every one of them to participate in your program. But today I just want you to talk not only to me, but to my uh, my people. You know, I have, a, I have a tribe on different platforms. And I know that they are going to be excited to hear from you. Also, because most of the time we just talk about women. It's like it's only women who have issues. But the truth is that women have a lot of issues because we think that the men have let us down or are letting us down. And we don't know what's going on with the men. Sometimes it's hard for me to figure out my own son. So let me not even go too far. Thank you so much, Baba, for making the time. And uh, just introduce yourself. Just feel free. Just talk as informally as your, your sons just said that there's no protocol. Thank you, Baba. Thank you so much, my sister. I am so honored to be on your platform. Uh, a very warm greetings to you and to your family, to your sons, to the uh, to the broader family, the community, and everyone else who is uh, with us right now. I'll be watching this in some future time. My name is Baba Buntu. My full name is uh, Baba Amani Olubanjo Buntu. Um, and you probably hear a Yoruba name in, in between there. Um, I have quite a Pan-African journey in this world, um, but I uh, biologically I'm from an African Caribbean family uh, from the Eastern Caribbean and a beautiful small island called Anguilla. Um, but for more than half my life, I have lived in uh, Azania or Mzanzi or South Africa, where I am now, um, where I have my immediate family and uh, we have set up an institution around our home called Ebu Kofini Solutions. And I like that you are using the word kings here uh, in your in your write-up. Ebu Kofini is from the Nguni languages of Southern Africa, and it means uh, house of royalty. And, oh, it normally, wow. and it normally is a place that is um, obviously for the kings and queens of the nation, but indigenously is it means that those who have... Um, the royal descent by culture. And it's important to make that distinction that we have chosen it as a word. It's not that we are by lineage uh, necessarily uh, queens and, and kings of the nation as such, but we have set it up more to as an aspiration. As African people, we need to move in this world knowing that we come from a royal principle of leadership. And that means that when we have become corrupted and violate each other, abuse each other, lie and cheat and do things that harm the nation, we have left the royal principle and we want to stick to the royal principle within family, within community, uh, in everything that we do. So for me, um, I think what I'm, I'm going to share with you today is a bit of our journey and why we do the work that we do. And it's very important for everybody to understand that even if I carry a, 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 a title like doctor, which really is my academic title, uh, I, I have a doctorate in philosophy of education from the University of South Africa. 
Um, but my, my most important title, if there should ever be one, is the next one, which is Baba. Baba means father across the continent and across all African communities. And it's something that I, many years ago, used to be called. It was a name that was given to me by many young people that I was working with who, who said, but we see a father in you. You are more father to me than my biological father. And in the beginning, I felt that I can't take this title. It's too much. You know, I think there's, there's a difference between being called Mama and being called Baba. And equally, they are, they, are, they are both very, very revered and important titles. But I think we are more used to our mothers being motherly and being caring for us. So it's kind of easier to give that reverence to a woman who's nurturing us. But many of us experience as we grow up in this world that men are not necessarily nurturing. Maybe they are can in, be inspiring. Maybe they have set a standard of everything that we aspire to. But not so many of us have felt nurtured by a, a, a grown man. So, so, to be, so, so to be called a father by somebody who's not a biological child of mine is a huge honor. And I carry it with the greatest sense of sensibility, of honor, and I must, I think it helps me as well to really keep myself on, on my toes. I cannot mess up if people see a fatherly figure in me, then I better deliver uh, uh, the best way that I can. So that's just a little bit about me. I don't know what, you, you can guide me if you'd like me to just go on or if you'd like to. Yeah, no, I, I will guide you, Baba. The reason why I was so excited to have you on this is because um, I'm a woman, right? I have three sons and I've had, men in my life have written a whole book on the murky dating and relationships terrain so i uh, when i listened to you on saturday talk about the role of the man of the father i was like which father you know i was like oh, okay let me just list it and then i listed and you said something about the there's some brokenness that is masqueraded and stuff and i was like are we women even listening to this or are the men even able to tell us this so that's why I, I got in touch to know a little bit more. And, and I found out this your um, Shabaka for men. I don't know what Shabaka means. I just want us, I want you to tell us a little bit about it and why you even started it. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me start with why I've taken an interest in creating a platform like Shabaka. So it's important to understand that we said that our company name and our home is named Ebu Kosini, House of Royalty. So within Space. We have many programs for children, for women, for men, for um, entrepreneurs, for many different types and needs in the community. We are first and foremost an educational, an African-centered educational institution. That's what we label ourselves as. But the, the, the part about African men, I think, to be honest, sister, for a long time, I ran away from the calling to do this because I felt there's something about how masculinity sits within our community oh. that men are just supposed to know how to be a man. So to even question it or to open up a workshop, can we talk about what does it mean to be an African man? It sounds so strange to most men. Like what, what kind of conversation is that? Who needs to come and talk about how to be a man? You would know how to be a man. Come on, man, what, what's wrong with you? And the feeling that if I actually attend a workshop to learn or to get insights on being a man, I'm, I'm admitting weakness. I'm standing before the world and saying, I don't know, which is something we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I run away from it every time it came out. I said, no, that's not going to be me. That's going to be, have to be someone else. But as I was doing lectures and seminars and workshops about other things, so often in many different communities, even different countries, African men would come up and ask very similar questions. Oh, Ubuntu, what do we do? Like, how, what is what is the role of an African man? What, what do we do with our pain? When is it going to be our time to talk about what we go through? And I was like, I can't ignore this because I've had my own history. And I think that for a very long time, I thought that the pains that I was carrying was just because I was weak and I had no idea. And then I realized that, no, but there are many men who talk about this, but it's not a conversation that is out there. And if it is, it's with stigma, it's with judgment, it's with looking down on this man. I think sometimes also women, you know, sometimes women would say that, you know, I want a man who's, um, uh, I, I want a man who is emotionally available and who's open and who can cry and who can be, but then they meet a man who can do that and is like, what kind of man is this? I, I don't know how to relate to this man because this is too much. He's crying. Who brought you up? Who brought you up? 
<laughs> you understand? So, so I think it's as a society, we have kind of let men just be. We haven't really made a, an effort to make sure what are really men's needs. So that's the background to how I then decided to start with workshops and, and safe space groups for men to just dialogue. And I think this is very important to explain in terms of the methodology because men don't want to come and learn from somebody how to be a man. Because as men, when we come into the room even, we are very competitive and we look at what kind of man are you, or you have a doctorate title, or you own two cars, or you are from this state or you're from that country. Already we're starting to see where on this schedule and hierarchy do you belong? So, to, 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 so, so what we do at the beginning of every session when we speak, it's to lower the, and flatten that balance so that we don't even know, are we speaking to a CEO? Are we speaking to somebody who's unemployed? Are we speaking to somebody who has three wives, who's not married? Like all of those things are not mentioned. We ask, say three things that you know about being an African man. That's the introduction. Not, are you employed? Do you own a company? Are you rich? Because when we do that, we start this hierarchy and then we start to compete. And then we want to outsmart each other. And we don't want to do that. So, so to be able to see each other just as brothers, just as men. And my sister, you know, I feel so privileged because I realized time and time again, now we've been doing this for about 12 years. Oh. I have direct insight. It's, just, it's so important for me to say this, and especially as an African woman, because I know many African women do not see this side of us. Yeah. Every week I sit with men who are strong and confident and great men, but they also cry. They also fall apart. They also share their insecurities. They also share about being violated when they were young. They also talk about pains that they've never told anyone, including their wife including their best friend. They've never had this conversation because they think if they do, they'll be judged, they'll be taken advantage of, the, the rumor will start spreading around and they will lose the little clout they feel they have to hold on to life. This is how many of us as men move in this world. We have decided that our pain will have to stay at the back. It will never come out. And by that, we hurt ourselves and we hurt those who love us. But, but exactly, and, and, and it has to change. So that is why I love this uh, teen talk concept because I was like, maybe it's too late to get the big ones, the, uh, the, the, the big kids. Let's get the kids so that the kids grow up with that and are able to do this paradigm shift. Absolutely. So since the beginning, we have actually always wanted to do a lot of work with boys and teenage men. But what can I say? As a small organization, um, that is not necessarily getting any national or international funding. And that's both because for a very long time, this has not been a prioritized issue. It's only now that some people are coming on board and saying, but what about the boy child? What about men? Maybe we also need to set up platforms where they can speak and find their own healing journeys. Um, so it's becoming a little bit easier. But for a very long time, it's been a topic that has not really been an issue that people have prioritized. And what that means is that just, just imagine, I mean, you are different, sister, but most uh, parents, if they hear that their sons are going to be part of a program to learn about this, they will be skeptical. What is this? Because half the time you find that when people do this work, there's an agenda. They want to teach something that you may disagree with, and there's something else that it comes with. So we don't come with an agenda. We just want it to be an open platform, and we're not forcing anyone to take a particular standpoint. We just... We just manage the conversation. So, so for instance, if somebody said, "Ah, you see, women are ridiculous," we 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 don't we, we don't want that kind of statement. But we also don't want to just silence it. So instead, we ask, "When you say that, what experiences do you have that has made you say that about women?" Because some of us experience women as loving, as caring, as as great role models in our society. Why are you not seeing them as that? And then the story comes. No. My mother didn't care about me. She always cared about my young, my older brother and said I should be like him. And I didn't know how to be like him. And then over the years, I decided it's fine. I'm a disappointment to my family. It's fine. I'll move out. I'll walk my own journey. I'm not going to look to them for guidance ever. And you become hardened. You become bitter. You become angry. And because you cannot talk about it, 
uh, and a lot of us as men, African men do that. We place the, 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 the reason for our problem outside ourselves. So the problem is my mother. The problem is my wife. The problem is my father who was not there. And th that is a problem. I'm not denying that. But at one point, and I always say this, for instance, many of us have struggled with our relationship to our fathers and, and a fatherly role model that helps us to position ourselves as African men in the world. Mm -hmm. And at one point, you, you, you cannot continue to identify yourself as the fatherless child. You are more than that. You are not just abandoned. You are also somebody who was taught, who was, who it was demonstrated to how not to be a father. So what are you doing now to position yourself differently? Because probably even for that, for that father who didn't care, who seemed to be so violent, he probably also has a story. And when he was 16, he probably also said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a great father. My children are going to love me. But it didn't happen. So you also need to study why is it that some men say they're going to be great, but they don't end up being great. Is it because men are useless? Is it because men are trash? Is it because men don't have it in them to be that? I don't think so. I think every man has the possibility to be a king. But we need to walk the journey to become that. And I hope for, that's why I'm working so much with young men, that I'm hoping that they can be that king or start that kingly journey before they get married and before they have children. Because when you do that, you kind of, you set a certain marker in your life. And after that, you are not so interested in changing. You don't want to be criticized. You don't want to be called out. You, 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 you feel that, you know, you, 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 and we also have this thing that, if my brother is married and I have a certain view of what he does to his wife, I'm not supposed to tell him. I think this is this this is ridiculous. This is not even cultural. It doesn't work for us. We need to be able to have frank and confrontational brotherly conversations because we care for each other, not just because we want to criticize. So I want us to set the benchmark and the expectations high. So, Baba, do you think that we, 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 when I talk of we, I'm talking of men and women. We have to come to realize that we each have our stories, we each have our baggages, and then we don't have to see each other like we are competing. We have to actually really be brother and sister before we even think about, you know, sometimes I think trying to be in a relationship without this brother sister thing, it makes us get into the ring too fast. And when we get into the ring, it's fine. And Absolutely. that's why you see many of us, I'm honest, right? I'm a single yep. mom. And, and um, before, not now, but several years ago, I was like, oh, all men are trash. Yep. Maybe because one or two were trash to me. You know? exactly. and, and of course, men too probably were just playing around with me because, well, I was also... So when we don't know this um, identity part of us, we, mm. we fight more than we should... Uh, you know, be together. Absolutely. You, you, what you are saying is so important and it's something that we all need to take in. The challenge, however, is, so you, you speak about the importance of talking to young men while they are young. Often what happens is that when, when uh, young men are 14, 15, they have nobody to talk to. And if they're going to talk to you as a parent and say, what is sex? Most parents are being, ha, huh, you talk about sex. What's wrong with you? Are you having sex? <laughs> I don't want this conversation. Just go outside. This is nonsense. You can't come and talk to me like this. So they learn that they should not ask. And then where do they go? They go to the street corners and then they hear men bragging. They hear men saying all kinds of nonsense. And then they think, okay, I haven't even done that. I didn't even know that it was like that. I need to step up. I need to impress my, my, my brothers. I need to do something. And then they go out and they don't know how to, to, to approach a woman. And they just grab a woman because now their 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 manhood is at stake. And then you know when you get to a certain age, if you don't have a girlfriend, you are seen in a certain way, and people are starting to make jokes about you. And this is at a point in your life where you are very vulnerable. You want people to see you as somebody. And if you're not anyone, you are. It's like you are falling apart. So you may lie, you may force someone, you may you may you may start to construct your life in a very at least towards towards becoming quite violent and dominating towards women because they must just be enslaved to your ego. And the thing is, if you don't have anyone to guide you through that stage in an, in an honorable way, you may develop a great personality in terms of your leadership, your business acumen, all kinds of things. So people look up to you. People Academic qualifications. You understand. 
But when it comes to the home, when it comes to what happens at the club, what happens at the at the street corner is 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 violent. It's broken, and that's why I like to you know there's this term out there about which is called um, toxic masculinity. I think to us as African men, we, I want us to call it broken masculinity. And that's not because I don't want us to take accountability, but it's something that was also done to us. The whole colonial regime was based on making sure that African men would be powerless. We were treated as children. We were called boys. We were paraded in front of our women as completely powerless enslaved men and i'm sure something died in us for generations because we were so powerless so unable to do anything that anyone could admire us or look up to us for so we learned from that experience that violence works if i tell my woman you shut up you are ugly you should even be happy that i'm married to you nobody wants you you just shut up it works some women will crumble under that voice and say okay fine i'm, I'm sorry sir. i'm sorry and 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 in that, some of us, we experience that our ego, at least there's one person who respects me. She knows what to say. But it's a violent construct. It's not something we can keep on doing because we are destroying our own in that process. And that's that's why I'm calling it broken masculinity. And that's why I want us as African men not to say we are trash and useless and unable, but that we need some help. Because if you remember very well, one thing that African culture has always done is to say, we don't expect you to master this just by yourself. To become married, there's supposed to be a cultural process to invite you yeah. into that institution. As a, going from girl to woman, from boy to man, culture is supposed to guide you. But now many of us live, especially in the urban areas, where these cultures are not as functional. These cultures are looked down on. We say, no, I'm a man because I'm this age. No, I'm a man because I got money. No, I'm a man because I've got a car. But how does, how does a car make you a man? The, the, the attributes you need has nothing to do with the car. <laughs> your son, your wife will not will not benefit from the qualities you get from driving a car. So we we we, we it's, it's a very skewed terrain, and I want to clean it up because I believe we can. And my sister, let me say this: I see this every day. I see incredible men. I see men who once were violent and and stubborn. And not ridiculous, maybe, let me not use that word, but, but we're completely off the line of where they should be, who have walked the journey, who have become strong, confident men, who their partners, their children look up to and love and have no problem that they have a power because I think we have also learned that power must mean you are under me. I'm on top of you. I decide what you should do. I call I you control me. you. Hmm. You understand? But that's hmm. not power. That's domination. And we need to learn a new concept of power, which is the man and the woman creating that with and through each other. So when I met my wife and we met each other, the first thing we needed to do was to acknowledge that we come from a broken past. We, we haven't seen a whole lot of great relationships, even if we now think we can create one. So what is it that we need to do? How do we avoid falling into the pit that so many couples around us are doing? And what we do in that is that we use um, ways to keep the conversation going. We, we, we are honest. We have meetings with each other. We, we look after our relationship and our marriage almost in a business kind of way. It's not really just business, but I'm, I'm using that expression to say, you know, you care about your business. If your business is not doing well, you don't say, ah, I'm not selling anything, but I got 2,000 pairs of shoes. shoes. Nobody's buying it. You're not just saying that. You say, you know, mm. can you come and help me? Can I go to a business seminar? Can I can I get somebody to help? You do something about it because you care yeah. about it. And the same thing, we need to also care about our relationships, our family marriages, and we can do something about it. Thank you, Baba. So I want to go to the last part of this because I don't want to take too much of your time and I also have stuff to go. Um, talking about our young kings, because I'm a single mother, I have three kings, and I, I I acknowledge that on uh, on on the program on Saturday that I just knew I couldn't be their father. You know, yeah. when people say I'm the mother and the father, me I'm not the father. I can yeah. just play some roles, but I I pray to God to give me fatherly figures, and and by grace I've been having, and that's why when I learned of this program, I taught my son, look at this program, and he says, sure, mom, that's cool. So I'm just so wow. so grateful. So now, is there something that we mothers, 
especially maybe single mothers or even mothers who have partners or husbands who are emotionally absent and you know you know it papa so i'm not the one to tell you is that something that we can do now to help our young kings so that they don't go learn from this uh, um other broken king yeah. or stuff and yes yeah. and no thank you for that question i think it is important that you investigate in your community who are some of the men who have attributes that you think this is healthy for a young man and that it, it yes it means kindness it means respect it means great values but it also means and i think this is what many men need to learn and i i'm not saying you cannot learn it from a woman but i think it is so significant when you can learn it from a man that men need to learn to be disciplined they need to learn how to say no they need to learn how to stand when everybody's laughing at you and looking down at you and not allow your ego to become compromised. And that's, it's important for, because I think often girls will model themselves uh, uh, to, to women that are older than them. The same thing, sure. boys will also model themselves to, to men who are older than them. And if we see a whole lot of men who uphold and practice quite broken values, we think that that's what it is to be a man. So I think as a parent, you need to look at are the people within your society, within the cultural society, within a religious society, within a sports society, that you think this is a man who I admire for this, and I think he's doing this. And you do some investigation, find out, then you find out. And I, I have, I have found that men may feel, but I can't be a mentor. I don't know what it means to be a mentor. Maybe they're not a father yet themselves, and they think, why are you asking me? But sit down and talk about what it is. I'd like my son to spend some time with you, maybe become a part of the movement that you have or the activities that you do. But I'd like you to also, after the activities, take him aside and just talk to him. Like, what does he understand about growing up in this world? Share with him your story. It doesn't have to be a perfect story, but share with him how you manage yourself, how you, be, how you, how you have found your discipline and your ability to be orderly. And he will then take a cue from that and think, that's a different story. I've never heard anybody tell me this. Am I doing this? How do I find that in myself? And that's what we do through the teen talk sessions. And I'm just inviting every parent of a teenage young king between 12 and 19, anywhere in the world, any African family. And we, we focus a lot on the African family because we also feel that we have a particular story, even if we have many differences as well, but there's a particular story that sits with us and our violence and our ignorance and the mistakes that we do that we need to take responsibility for. So we have two groups, uh, one that is 12 to 15, another one that is 16 to 15, where they through Zoom and through online uh, virtual meetings once a, once a week have an hour to spend together and also be guided by young adults so these are young adults that have been mentored by myself okay. and our, our community for a while they are between the ages of 25 and 35 and they are young they are energetic they have that spirit and they can motivate these young men and they were not it's not so long ago that they were also teenagers so they can draw from their own uh, mistakes they can teach from their own um uh, journey towards becoming uh, men. So for a small fee, uh, this is open for every African family around the world. And, and I'm sure through, through your platform, you, can, you will share the, how people can sign up and get in touch with us. Yeah, I, I mean, it's very important because at, at a certain age, the, the, the young man doesn't talk to you anymore. You say, how are you? Fine. What's up? It's fine. Exactly. You know, stuff like yeah. that. So I'm like, now, I'm not going to start shouting at him and say, what is all that? I'll be like, okay, well, if he's going to talk with so 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 and so person, he's going to watch so so and so person, he's going yeah. to read so so and so books. Yeah, I'm so grateful. So is it easy? Do you find it easy for them, for these teens to open up, maybe talk about some struggles, maybe some mental health challenges and things like that? No. It's not easy. And, and, and what, what we allow our young men to do is for at least the first months, some are so shy they want to keep their camera off. They don't want to open the camera. Because oh, if, okay. and, 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 and we can be irritated and say, but open your camera, man. You are on an international meeting. We need to see who you are. And then they, they don't want to. And it's because already as a teenager, many African young men, already they are judged. Because, and I, and I think, let me say this. I'm studying how we treat boys in society. And because boys are seen to be, make more noise, they are more difficult to discipline, they are more difficult to tone down. 
we almost have an issue with boys more than girls. Girls are pretty, they listen, they are nice, but boys, I got them outside. Why you have to make so much noise? Go outside. I am tired of you. And all, all the time I'm telling you things, go outside. And men start to say, I'm a problem. I'm a problem. I'm a problem. So, so when you as a mother say, hey, son, come, I want to talk to you. Oh, no, again. And already they, they put on this mask. So they say, what's going on? When I talk, I, I, I just called my son. What? I was just telling him this morning, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. As soon as I call his name, what? <laughs> That's the age. Can you, see? See? Can you see? And maybe you are not too harsh on him, but I think no. there's, there's an inside thing that starts with being a teenager, feeling awkward, not sure where life is going to take you. So when you feel that you are already judged before you are even asked, it's safer to say, I don't know. It's safer to say, uh, no. Like you, you try to find the shortest word and the shortest sentence ever so that you can get out of the meeting. So we allow them to be quiet. We, we, we do say, okay, now we're going to open up the microphones. Everyone has to say one suggestion to this question. Then they have to say something. But even those who are not very talkative, we give them some time. And you would see some of the, the young men you showed on the video prior to our interview. Some of them started as saying nothing. Now they are our spokespersons. So it's oh. also about finding a, a space where they can model themselves against the older men that are facilitating and also finding that confidence. Remember he pointed out, T-Talks gives me confidence. And that's something we need to build. And this society just expects men to be confident. And what men do when they haven't been taught how to, they become arrogant, they become entitled, they become uh, dominating. That's not power, that's not strength, but it looks like it. So we need to teach them step by step. Baba, thank you so much. My last question to you is that um, you are from you are in South Africa. You see the, the the level of domestic abuse and violence, and well, statistics show that it is more men who are violent and stuff. But it starts from somewhere, and uh, sometimes there's no there's no healing possible or available because maybe somebody kills the other person or it's just so it, it and it just keeps going on and on and on again so how do you teach these things who come to you to know that violence is not the solution to you know any disagreements that might come up in the yeah. home so for those who are very young um we take them on an empowerment journey to for them to identify with the uh, innate powers that they actually have available to them. So talents, skills, ways of presenting, ways of talking, ways of carrying yourself. If it's somebody who has already started a violent journey, like they have already started to have some problematic and unbecoming behaviors, we, instead of just say, because I think society, we, we, we are doing a mistake when we say, ah, you mustn't hit your woman. You mustn't be like this. You mustn't be like that. Yeah, but how am I supposed to be different? Because this is, this is something that I'm very passionate about us having conversations about. Many of our men also tell a different story that we don't really recognize in our society. So for instance, we have something called Men on the Mountain where, where men come out and say, I'm ready now to walk the, words, walk the journey towards becoming a father and a husband. We ask, what is your first memory of sex? Do you know that out of every 10, I'm sure six will say, my, my first experience started when I was five. My first experience started when I was seven. You'd be like, what started? What do you mean? What started when you were five? Are you, do you get my question? Maybe you don't understand what I'm asking. And then what has happened is that there was a child minder. There was an older cousin. There was somebody they visited who said, "Take, I'm going to show you something. Touch me here. This is women too. And, and, and I think there's some, this is why I'm saying that there's a brokenness that sits with us because the boundaries that we're supposed to hold. And I do agree that men have violated women more than the opposite. But I also want us to talk about the violations that some women have done. And let me just add this. Sometimes we think of violations as brutality. So to be threatened, I'm going to kill you if you don't do this. D -d 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 Take off your clothes. I'm going to beat you. Like we think about it in that way. But sometimes it's that caring older person who is grooming a, a young child who feels a bit, I don't have a lot of friends. I, I spend most of my time alone. So it's nice to have a, a attention. It's nice that an older person say, come with me. I'll give you some sweets. Come, we'll sit outside and we'll do nice things. You can even come and sleep over at my house. Now, as a young child who doesn't have a lot of friends, you want to do that. You are finally recognized. You are seen. You are listened to. But then this adult is saying that, 
for, for, uh, for you to get this candy, you also need to do something for me. Let me bath you. Let me, let me, let me show you a part of my body. Like th these things are happening in our societies and I, we haven't done enough to allow women the space to also talk about their violations. But even more, we haven't even begun to talk about what many men have experienced. And this continues in dark rooms under the under the pretense. Some, and you know this, both men and women have experienced this, have often been told that, don't mention this to anyone. You are bringing shame on our family. What, what yeah. are you expecting? The whole street knows about this. We won't be able to go to church. We don't be, no, don't say anything. Just be happy that he didn't rape you or he didn't sodomize or he didn't, you know, we say things like that. It mm. is so horrible. So, um, and men would continue to say, I have nothing to talk about. What about what happened? You know, some men would say this. I was eight and this woman, she allowed me to touch her. So in my view, she gave me access and I had an early start. And they smile. And you think you were eight. Nobody's supposed to even cross that boundary with you whatsoever at eight. And this is what broken masculinity does. As a man, you are told that if a woman gives you access to her body, that's a power move. That's something you should be proud of. That's something that gives you a head start. You can even brag about it. What men do not know how to have a conversation about, they will laugh about this story to their friend and say, you know what she did to me? But actually inside, you are completely broken. And what happens when you then reach your actual puberty and you are functionally able to en engage in intimacy, you have sex with everybody because your body is just taken away from you. And some of that you, you force. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Baba, it means that hurt people hurt people, and we Thank need you. to be able to to know that both of us, men and women, we have been broken, and we need to give each other, you know, that grace. As you rightly said, we talk more about to the women's own, and we see it more maybe because women express themselves more, or maybe there are more organizations that are out there for women and all of those things. But uh, I'm just like. I have kings, I have to watch out for them and I have to promote the, this this part of the narrative, you know, and it makes True. me now look at men differently. Yeah. Like, no, they didn't just want to abuse me. They didn't know better. And maybe they had some hurt in them. They, they thought uh, that's the best way to express it to me, you know. And then I also see how they go from one relationship to the other. So it means that both of us struggle. So both, both of us have to and what yeah. I want to maybe say as my concluding mark, remarks is yeah. that we also need to learn as African women and men to listen to each other. Because yeah. I think when, when I, as a man, when I have not been invited into a space where you get to teach me what you go through, I easily, with my brothers, then decide that you are just ungrateful. You are just there to expose men. You are just there to get attention. I mean, he wasn't that bad. Come on, he had a car. You were living in a nice house. Why are you only, only complaining? Because I haven't connected with your story. So, you know, there's this stereotype out there that women are emotional. They, they complain all the time. They break down for nothing. And if that's what I'm hearing from my, from my brothers, I'm easily shutting you down, saying, no, this is the, you are just exaggerating. You see, the problem with you is that you hate men. And equally, so women will also say this to men, saying, we, we never hear you. When we ask you what's going on, you say there's nothing. You never want to talk. You never want to share with us. So we, we don't know what to do with you guys. And the approach might not be good. Yes, that's the communication we need to resolve. And yeah. that's why we first, because some people are saying, why do you have such a gender focus on men? It's not a gender focus. It's what we want to inspire men to, is to have conversations within their homes, within their families, yeah. within with their partners mm -hmm. but they cannot do that if they haven't started the healing process themselves yeah, and allow yeah. themselves to say that i don't have to be ashamed there's nothing wrong with me there's i'm not unable i don't have to defend myself all the time i can also be vulnerable i can be open and i can there, there, baba not to cut you short but there's so much focus already on the woman and stuff so for me it's like no no let's not do that to the brothers let's not do that it's let's not even start there okay so baba i put your your links right how people can follow you and so they might get more information about this program and uh find out how to register their yeah. their sons right and i think Please. that this yeah 
Do, yeah, is, no. there, is there ever an opportunity to talk to the parents a little bit about what will go on during the program so that we are not concerned that they're going to talk to our sons about, you know, some of those weird things that people talk out there about? Absolutely, absolutely. And what we do, I think, uh, let me just check the date. I think it's got, so it's a, it's a program on Sundays. I think we're going to start on Sunday, the 21st of August. So it's, there's a new semester going now from end of August until end of the year. So on the, the, the program starts up on Sunday the 28th. But Sunday the 21st, we're going to have a conversation with the families. So there you, we, we will have a conversation like this online where you can ask any question, where you can say, but in my culture, I don't allow my children to what, what, what. Say it, and then we will tell you how we deal with it, and then you can decide if this program is for your child or not. Okay, and we on. maybe also to say, so we have one rule. What what is shared by the young men in in our session, we don't tell the parents unless yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah, because it has to be a sacred space. But yeah. if they, for instance, say something that we can see, this is going to compromise your family. This is something that you've experienced that you need to tell your parents about. We will then coach that particular individual and make our suggestion. And, and at times we will say, even if you don't want us to tell your parents, we know we have to because it's up, your, your family needs to know because right now you need help or you've done something that's going to have impact on your family and we need to talk to your family about it. But other than that, we allow what, 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 what is spoken about in the teen talks stays in the teen talks. But how do you find the best time on that Sunday? You know how people are in all kinds of time zones. So we have it uh, from 6 to 7 South African time. West Africa, that would be 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, and in PM. Africa, yeah, PM, PM. Okay, so that's fine. Many people are yeah. already home, back from church. And so all it's of the day before things. you go back to school again. And then maybe by that time you have done your homeworks, you've done your family activities. If you go to church or anything else religiously, you probably have done that already. Okay, Baba, do you have any last words? No, so, I just so, want so to do, you know, it's, I want to say, uh, uh, I want to give this message to, to African sisters and women. We experience a lot of support from African women. How we often know that our projects work is mothers and partners who call us and say, what is it that you have done to my partner? He actually talks. He's, 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 he's mentoring me. I never thought I would want to even listen to one word that that man wants to say. Now I'm just drinking from his wisdom like he's changed. What did you do? And, and that's how we know that we made an impact when we know that the partners who probably were very skeptical and maybe even at one point had given up, when they call us and say, this is incredible. So I just want to give a huge thank you to the African woman for loving the African man, for supporting the African man, for believing in us. We need, we may not tell you this, but when you praise us, when you point out what's good about us, we are just coming alive. Oh, I have to lay. <laughs> So and how you. do the men who have been through your program feel when they see their own transformation? Are they scared you know about it or they embrace it? No, they embrace it. They are, well, oh. I guess I guess there are individual differences, but most embrace it. And I think I can put you in touch with so many men who would say five years ago I was like this and that. Now through this program and through because it's not the program only. It's like I'm going back to what the young man was saying in the video. I'm mm -hmm. I'm 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 finding my confidence. I'm being inspired to find my confidence. I'm being heard. I'm being seen. And as African people generally, and maybe in a specific way as African men, we don't feel that we are worthy. We don't feel that we are important. M many of us take on these dominating behaviors because we think that's all we can do to push people to respect us. But many of us feel that if if you could really pull me apart. There, would, there wouldn't be a lot of things you could find to respect me for. That's how we feel. So to find that within yourself, it makes you proud. It makes you feel that, you know what, I might not be perfect, but I have great I have attributes, I have great things, and I'm improving myself as I walk. Thank you so much, Baba. I mean, I, I, I said 45 minutes, Max, is um, three minutes over 45 minutes. You know, in Africa, we say black mark time. You hey, sometimes hey, hey. don't start on time and you don't end on time. I'm just so grateful. I'll definitely no, keep in touch and I'm excited to see uh, what um, the transformation in my son after the program and his yes. siblings are also going to take this program. I mean, I'm so excited. Thank you Thank so you much, Baba. Much. Do have a wonderful um, rest of your day. Same to you and uh, blessings to everyone who's part of this. Please get in touch with us and all the best with all the work that you do. 
拜。拜。Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I I almost want to stop without saying a bye bye. I really hope that、um, we are going to you know get in touch and、um, register our sons and.、Uh, You know, so that we don't keep saying that all men are like that. Why can you not just be like that? You know,、uh, let them be mentored by people who have、uh, walked that road and have a proven track of、uh, of record of having、um, just done so much work. We are in this journey called life together. We cannot afford to continue being at each other's neck and taking it out on each other. Whereas we could learn. To harness all that is within us, and then treat each other the way we ourselves want to be treated, and we would just appreciate you kings better when you get to know who you are and you show that to us. We are not going to shame you. I personally, and I think that many of us queens and sisters don't want to be shaming men anymore. I don't want to, you know, to be at loggerheads with you anymore and all of those things. So please do not hesitate to. Contact、uh, the doctor Baba Buntu, you know, and、uh, yeah, encourage your the men in your life, right, to to get to know about his awesome programs too. Okay, until our next impact talk. This is Queen Mag, Maria Banga. So many things in one. God bless us all. <laughs>